In this video, I'll show you how to use work planes to help construct your object. I'm just going to start with a cylinder. And it's going to be hollow. Extrude that. It's a one inch. And what I want to do is put a hole in the side of this. Turn that around. Put a hole in the side of this cylinder. But if you try to do a sketch, you can't choose a cylinder. You can only choose a flat surface. So I'm going to need to create a work plane. So because I built my sketch around the origin, it really makes things simpler at this point. So if you go over here to your part tree, you click on that plus sign by origin, you'll see all of your planes, your original planes, will show up here. If you want them to continue to show up, just right click on one and put a check mark by visibility. And I'll use that plane there. And I want one on the surface, so come up here to plane and then click on that little arrow and we'll do an offset from plane. Click on that existing plane. You can see that arrow. Uh, the radius of this is 0.75 so that'll put it on the surface. But I want it to go the other direction. So just make it a minus 0.75. Check mark that. And you can turn off this plane either by coming over here and right clicking and uh, unchecking visibility. Or you can right click on the plane itself and turn off the visibility. So now we just have one plane to work with. Start a new sketch. Put my hole on, make sure you put it on the center line. I need to locate that hole vertically. Finish it. And then I'll do an extrude cut. So make sure it's set for cut. Uh, if you want it to go all the way through, choose that. But in this case, we only want the hole to go part way through. So you can either input a distance or you can use this tool where it will extrude up to the surface that you choose. So if I choose that one, the hole will only go through this part because it'll stop when it hits the other side of the cylinder. And let's see, I'll right click this, turn the visibility off, and you can see I have a hole in just that side right there. And let's continue on with this part. I want to make sure that I attach to that quadrant there when I'm making this next sketch. And I'm going to recommend in this case, whenever you're trying to meet a circular shape, just go on past the circle and then trim it back. That way you know you're going to end up with a closed shape. And I can't use this existing circle as part of this new sketch. I, I need to put a new one on there. And then I'll just trim back using my trim tool. Trim off that. There we go. Trim off circle and that piece I will still need to add dimensions to that finish the sketch I'll extrude that switch directions and it's 0.25 thick so I've got the shape. Oh, I do need a hole in there. I could have done that on the previous sketch, but I'll just make a separate sketch. It's quick and easy. 0.25. I need to locate it. Finish and do an extrude cut through the part. Say OK. So I have all the features on there except for the fillets. So using the fillet tool, the radius that's called out is 0.125. So we're good. We just have to select those corners and that inside corner and say OK. And that's our completed part. I'll save that. And then I'll make a new drawing. Make sure you change the sheet size to 
to a B size, double click, say OK. And don't let the software decide what the views are going to be. It's up to you to choose the views. Uh, I think a lot of times it's easier just to delete the views and then come up here and go to base view. And when this pops up, remember you can move the views using this tool. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I'm going to be able to see in one of my views, I can see that hole. So this is probably the best way I can lay that out. Right click and say, okay. So I think this works well for my orthographic views. I'm going to add my center marks. Always put center marks for holes and always put center lines for the side view of the hole. I'm going to click on the two sides and do them all. Don't just pick the ones that are easy. Now this one's a little tricky because the hole, the hole gets interrupted because that other hole, so it's going to look kind of short. So I hit escape. I can click on this center line and I can pull it out. It doesn't look fabulous, but it, it looks good enough. So I've got my center lines on there. I'll dimension this. Now, whenever you have a full circle, the dimension should call out the diameter. See on that hole, it calls it out. On that one, it's interrupted, so it's going to call out the radius. And that's the correct way for the call out to appear. And I usually wait on my diameter so I have the locations because you got more flexibility on the, where you're going to actually put those dimensions. I do need to call out this diameter. Now, just because of the way this hole, let me zoom in on that, because the way this hole appears, it's going to call out a radius dimension, but that's not acceptable. It's a full circle. So double click this. Remember, these lines here represent the dimension. And what we're going to do is hide that because we're going to override it and put our own dimension in there. And we need a diameter symbol. So you see all your symbols are in here. So there's diameter put a space and 0.25 and that's a correct way to have that diameter on there. The other thing I need to do is diameter is uh, dimension these fillets and that fillet dimension tool I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit but sometimes when you try to show the fillet it won't grab onto it just zoom in if that's the case just zoom in on it and you can put it on there All right see that so zoom in some more there we go. And we have three fillets that are the same. So there's a couple ways you can handle it. If you double click on this and I can make sure my cursor is behind there, I'll put a space and then you should use capital letters, put TYP for typical. And that would mean any fillet that you see is going to be a 0.13, which is actually 0.125 radius. The other thing you could do is put a general note on your drawing. So you make a text box here and put a note and that note is going to say all fillets and rounds radius 0.125 so either way that takes care of it what you don't want to have to do imagine having a drawing with like 10 or 20 fillets is dimension every single fillet so either a note like this or a note like that but you don't need to put both of them so I'll just delete that one that's probably a better way to do it and then we're going to want to fill out the title block six say okay and then we'll save this now remember however you save the drawing is going to show up in there and what you want to do is do the same thing. Do the page number, problem number, save it, and that'll show up in the title block. And then lastly, you're going to export this as a PDF. And that's what you'd send me to be graded.